<laughs> Honestly, how does that feel? Actually, have to talk to me. Normal. Normal. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Just haven't thought about that in years. I can't believe you use a dress like that, man. Jesus. Just come on. Uh, what was it like for you growing up? Uh, I had a great childhood. I uh, lived in the flats across the road from this building. I lived in Joseph Mansions uh, most of my life. I loved it. Growing up in the 70s and the 80s, we grew up in uh, Shelfsley Flats. We lived in St. Bridget's Gardens um, and we lived on the second balcony. Growing up in Garrow Street was great. I was out playing and running around and getting called in for your dinner. I didn't want to go in for your dinner. Yeah, it was a brilliant childhood I had. Um, no cameras, no phones, no uh, iPads, none of that. Everybody was the same and you had neighbours, they were great. Did you have the same freedom as boys did? Um, freedom, not really. Um, I wasn't allowed to leave the flats, I wasn't allowed to go around the shop. It was, I hated that part. So the girls, we always done all the cleaning kind of thing, you know, and going to the shops and looking after any of the babies that were in the house or where the fellas usually got away with more, they like. There was so much visibility of uh, gay people back then and how I, you were treated. I never noticed it. Growing up, I, I actually never noticed it. Maybe just on some um, TV. Um, you might have seen bits of it, but it would have been kind of late night TV and you weren't allowed to watch it. Um, I've been gay since I was in school, Bobby. About five or six, I knew it then. And I didn't know anybody else at the time, you know. And then when I grew up and moved to Ballybock, I, I blossomed. <laughs> I came out. Um, but it wasn't as visible then, definitely not, as it is, is now. It was hid and my man and dad didn't like it very well and none of the family because they didn't really know much about it. And we used yeah. to all go out and hide in certain pubs. I think I might have been in my age 17 or something like that before I was aware that people are different. I'm sure there was plenty of people that were gay but they couldn't just come out and say it because as it is hard enough now to come out and say it, it would have been worse even years ago because people wouldn't know what it was. Was there any pressure to look nice? Pressure to look nice. I had no clothes. All my clothes were second hand down. That's how nice I looked. So pressure was always there, yeah. But I never had anything new. I'd get a loan of your clothes maybe the next day and you'd have a loan of mine another day. Yeah. Everybody shared. Forced up best dressed, so whoever got up early in the morning got the best pair of stockings. No, not really, not in my world. But all my sisters, I could see that there was a lot of pressure on them. They all wear makeup and, uh, you know, all smelling themselves. And it wasn't pressure like there is today. Definitely more pressure now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What clothes did you wear? Uh, bell bottoms. <laughs> was that the trend? Oh yeah, bell bottoms and flary patterns, and we used to call them modern millie dresses. You know, little frills on the end of them. There used to be a lady across the way in the other flats. Uh, Mrs. Um, oh, I can't think of her name, but she used to make all her clothes. They were all skimpy things, but we thought we were gorgeous. I wore a lot of dungarines and jeans, and I never really wore skirts. I think the only time I wore skirts was in confirmation. The black and white was the, the trend then. Uh, to be white boots, mm -hmm. and to be black and white skirts, black polo necks. That was the kind of trend, because it was in the 60s then. I remember these black uh, black pumps that everybody had, and they, they had the thinnest sole underneath. And what really, made, really, really makes me laugh when I think back now is that when you wore them for so long, you'd get holes underneath them, and you'd have to have your um, a conflict box shoved inside the shoe until your parents got paid. Who was your fashion icon? Mary Cunt. She was in the 60s. And she brought everything black and white in. Oh, I'm embarrassed to say. You'd probably go, who's that? I think the fashion icon at the time, probably because I had a crush on her a bit, was Kim Wilde. And it was, uh, I loved by George and the way he used to dress. And my mum used to go to Charlie Brett's in um, Talbot Street. It was the shop on the corner and you could leave money off every week for uh, a set of clothes. What did you do with your friends? Any memories? Oh yes, I played um, Round Towers in the flats. I loved that game. And every kid in the area, in the neighbourhood, used to come in. Like you're talking about 40 to 50 children on the tarmac in the flats. Oh, we have great fond memories of my friends and uh, the longest uh, piece of rope that you could find. 
Um, we used to tie it onto the, the poles where the parents used to tie their the washing downstairs and we were hoping we'd get a pole where there was no washing in. We went to the pictures. We went to parties when we were younger. We used to love playing football. Yeah. Um, because we could all socialise after that. You know, you could go off if you're playing a match day and rings end, you could go to a pub over there, all the all the yeah. lesbians, like, you know. Where did you used to hang out? In this hall, St Agatha's Hall, or just in the flats and that was my limit. We'd hang around Ballybock and that under the arches. Yeah. But they're all gone now. We used to be grow of us just sitting under the arches, so we were a radio, laughing joke, slagging match. Did you have any relationships when you were younger? No. Not until the age of at least 17. Of course we did. We played kiss chasing and everything. <laughs> I know, yeah, Nana. Uh, but we had great times. We were all just kids in neighbourhoods, yeah, in the neighbourhood. So we just all just played kiss chasing or spin the bottle. They were great. And like, if you were going on a date or something, where would you go? A date? <laughs> I wasn't allowed to leave the flats, never mind go on the date. I probably went around the pram shed <laughs> on my day, yeah. What was school like? School was lovely, I loved school. I loved school, I wish I could go back to school. Would you? Yeah, definitely, I'd love to. I never went to secondary school or anything, but I'd love to go back to school, Mulberry Street. I hated it because I always made feel you were, um, there was something wrong with you because you came from the flats. Did you have any hobbies? Hopscotch and piggies. I used to knit now. Not a very good one, but I used to do it. Loved basketball. And I loved, I used to love to sing. Painting. And then that's what I done when I finished teaching. When I finished school, um, I went to work. I worked in a place called Bulger's. Um, it was a song factory. And I was in that for a good few years, then until I got married. And I worked in IMCO. That was a cleaners. They cleaned clothes. Um, I only worked for about two months after I got married. I didn't work anymore then until the school. I went into FOSS and that's where my emotions, everything came out for working with woodwork as well as doing sewing as well. I worked in the sewing factory since I was 13 uh, and a fish factory for a while. I hated that smell of fish off you all the time. It was rotten. Yeah, you didn't know that, you didn't. Didn't really like in the evening time going home on the, the bus to get funny looks out of people because you were stinking of fish. I worked in the Granby for two weeks. The place making sausages and burgers. Everybody walked out the in place to walk in at the time. You gave your parents your wages. Maybe you get five, six pounds back from your wages. Um, and for a 16, 17 year old, for six, seven pounds a week, that was a lot of money back then. So you thought you were rich. What, what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't know. Not yet. No. Okay, go on, sorry. What age did women start working? 14. Mm -hmm. mm. So in them days, you went to work at 12, 13, 14, most times, in them days. Wouldn't happen now, but... You wouldn't be out slaving all day. You couldn't do a few hours up yeah. and whatever, you know. How did you get your jobs? Um, just by my friends, they'd be working at the sound factory and they'd say, come on, we go round and ask us any work and just go round and you'd knock at the door. That's all you did. You didn't put in uh, anything else, qualifications or anything like that. You just went down and you asked. There was no such thing as uh, all this uh, emails and computer stuff when we were growing up. Were well, women and men treated differently? Yeah, I think so. I think because... I think a lot of men treated women like they were just, you yeah. know, you're the girl, you just have to do the cleaning, you just have to do that. My brothers have to choose with that. Your mothers or your grannies. Yeah. They would, they would have to have everything ready for the men when the men came in from work. Yeah. Women had a hard life. Yeah, when it came to work, they were, because, you know, men was always looked upon like they're stronger than women, like they're, they're well capable more than what we are. I can't remember of them being different to us. Or maybe they were, I just felt I was just who I was and it didn't matter whether you were different, I am who I am and that's okay with me. Did the women and men have different opportunities? Yeah, they did. Um, a lot of men walked in the likes of factories and stuff like that and building walls and stuff, you know, um, where women was completely different. Um, a lot of women back then was told to stay at home. Women had no opportunities. If they were married, they had babies. They were, had to be at home looking after the babies. They had to be home doing the washing, the cooking. Everything had to be done by the women. The men went out to work and that was their work done. Mm -hmm. You always knew men had to go to work. That was a 
you knew that that was the outcome for them. For us, it was like, you're going to get married and you're just going to have kids. And that was it. That was like, in them days, that's what you thought. You didn't think, well, coming from a neighbourhood like this in the inner city, you weren't encouraged to be a doctor or a nurse or anything like that. You were never encouraged. And then I didn't stay around school long enough to get encouraged either. But no, so to me, it was just, the boys, you knew they were going to go out and work. You worked until you got married and or had a baby, and then that was the end of it. Stop working. Did men have a stronger voice than women? Back then they did, yeah. Why? Because the man was the man was like the man of the house. He was the one who was earning the incomes coming in. Even if the woman, the the, the mother or the woman of the house still went out and worked, men were still looked upon like being stronger. Years ago, going back, I think women were afraid to upset men, afraid to say anything. They didn't get the opportunity. Not like today, a woman's voice is heard. Yeah. Even growing up, I don't think, I think women, oh, I always felt that, that you know, the women, me ma and the girls, they were, and, and me aunties and me, you know, all the women, yeah. Mago and Kathleen, all them together, they were, they were the voice. The men used to give it loads, but they used to do what they were told. Yeah. But the women kind of ruled the roost. Oh, what would you like to see uh, change for women? Equal opportunities for men and women. No, no woman or man should be treated any different. Everyone should be treat, treated equally. For women just to feel, I am as important as any other man or any other woman. There's no one above me and there's nobody below me. And if you can go along with life like that, you'll do okay. Well, I think they've already got that. A lot of the women now, young ones and women now, they just have a voice, that's it. They're able to stand up, speak back, say their piece, say what they have to say. Women's voice to come out more. They're only starting to come out now. But women is much stronger. Any woman is stronger than any man. Any woman that gives birth to a child. A man wouldn't do that. Women are much stronger in all sense. And the women are coming out more now and they are getting stronger. And they're getting over. They're taking jobs now that men have. Yeah. That women would be shunned on years ago. So good luck to the women.